Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the second day of the Gemini Solar Festival gathering of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of the coordinating group of the 2025 initiative. Today, we will continue to focus on the topic of right relationships. How we manifest the vision through our discipleship's ability and capacities to our service. How do we do it through right relationships on the individual level, on group level, communities and nations. Yesterday we had a rich sharing and today we will have a opportunity to expand our field of sharing by stepping in into the circle and having a conversation within a format of open forum. And so let's start our day two and continue our work. Over to you, Dot. Thank you, Alexander. We'll open today with a naming circle, inviting all of us to bring ourselves fully into this sharing by giving voice to our name and where we are calling in from. We'll begin with the staff list. When you look at attendees on your dashboard there, uh, the staff list, and then we'll go to attendees and we'll go down through the list. I will say your name. Alexander will have unmuted you. However, you still might need to unmute yourself. Please say your name and where you are calling in from. Example, Dot Maver calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Welcome, Dot. Thank you, Alexander. So once your name is called, we'll give 10 seconds for you to begin to respond. And otherwise, I will simply welcome each one into the circle and we will continue to move on. And then at the very end, uh, we'll just invite anyone who may have joined after the start of this naming circle and we'll give just a second for that in case there is someone who would like to give voice so let us unite our hearts across distance daniela hello everyone i'm calling from brussels belgium welcome Dan sorry welcome. <laughs> welcome daniela felix Hi, here's Felix from uh, Lützfeld in Germany. Welcome, Felix. René. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm René from Montreal, Canada. I believe Wendy is with you also. Yes, I am. <laughs> welcome, René and Wendy. Uta. Hello, I'm Uta Gabay. Uh, calling in from Germany, from the Frankfurt area. Welcome, Uta. Wendy. Wendy Thompson, Sydney, Australia. Alexander. Alexander Ilchuk here, calling from Brooklyn, New York. And Alexander, if there's anyone else there with you? Not at the moment. Okay. Welcome, Alexander. Alice. Hello, uh, I'm Alice Bueno Schneider. I'm calling from Geneva, Switzerland. Welcome, Alice. Welcome, Alice. Annette. Annette. Rabbit. Rabbit. Annette calling from New Zealand. 
Welcome, Annette. Annette Löffler. Annette Löffler calling from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Avon. Avon Madison from San Francisco Bay Area, USA. Welcome, Avon. Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Barbara Schoburn. Yeah, Barbara Schoburn, that's right. And Barbara Schoburn from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Welcome. Slovenia. Yes, Slovenia. Welcome, Barbara. Hi. Barclay. Hello, uh, Barclay Milton, uh, presently in Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Barclay. Cheryl. Welcome, Cheryl. Christine. Christine Thomas from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Welcome, Christine. Clinton. Clinton, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Clinton. Diane. Diane, calling from Dallas, Texas, USA. Welcome, Diane. F that. Efrat, please unmute yourself. Hi, this is Efrat, calling from Jerusalem, Israel. Mm. Welcome, Efrat. Francine. We, oui, um, Francine Gabay from uh, Montreal, Canada. Welcome, Francine. Thank Greg. You. Greg Quick calling from Broome in Western Australia. Welcome, yeah. Greg. Yes, this is Jeffrey Swainhart. I'm from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota in the US. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you. Josette. Hello, I am Josette. I am calling from uh, Strasbourg in France. Welcome, Josette. Judy. Calling from Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Judy. Sydney, Australia, we heard. Karen. Karen, please unmute yourself. Karen Gendron. Welcome, Karen. Karen Gritska. Karen Gritska calling from Portland, Oregon. Welcome, Karen. Laura. Hello. Uh, well, go ahead. Uh, hi, this is Laura from Ireland. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Leslie. Hello, Leslie Van Phoenix, Arizona, USA. Welcome, Leslie. Lona. Hello, it's Lona from Denmark. Welcome, Lona. Lynn. Welcome, Lynn. Michael Ladwiniak. Welcome, Michael. Michael Stacy. Blessings, everyone. Michael Stacy from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome, Michael. Nancy. Welcome, Nancy. Nicholas. Nicholas McManic from Pittsburgh, USA. Welcome, Nicholas. Olga.
Welcome, Olga. Paul. Hello, Paul. Olga de Lidiani. Ah, sorry, from Greece. Lancashire and England. Okay, hold on. Olga, will you please? Yes, voice. thank you. Uh, this is Olga de Lidiani from Athens, Greece. Uh, welcome, Olga. And Paul, thank will you. you Yes, welcome. Paul, will you kindly give voice again? Hello, Paul Murphy, presently in Lancashire in England. Welcome, Paul. Richard. Richard. And Rebecca. From Sunshine Coast, Australia. Welcome, Richard and Rebecca. Ron. Welcome, Ron. Sandra. Welcome, Sandra. Sheldon. Hello, friends. This is Sheldon Hughes from Penn Valley, California. Welcome, Sheldon. Silvana. Wanna please unmute yourself? Silvana? Welcome, Silvana. Tara. Welcome, Tara. Time. Tara Stewart, Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Welcome, Tara. Time. Welcome, Time. And we'll ask if there's anyone who did not have the opportunity to say their name and where they are calling in from if you will raise your hand we will unmute you welcome everyone over to you wendy for the alignment thank you dot In this alignment, you're invited to participate in a group identification process where within the embrace and protectiveness of the chalice of this group heart, we will transfer our awareness within the one being along a particular thread of silence and sound of the bell as we visualize identifying with three bells. <clears throat> Firstly, the bell at the center of cosmic foundation. Secondly, the mountain of the bell, Mount Kailash, in the planet planetary sphere. And thirdly, the bell within the individual orbit of each and every human being the bell that resides within us. We have the opportunity to strengthen the flow of silence and sound through this thread of the bell in the one life. Center your awareness in your individual heart center and become aware of the place within you which is called the bell. Hear, listen in your heart to the subtle sound resonating in your bell center.
within your individual heart centre, there's a door to the chamber of the group heart. Transfer your awareness into the group heart with all those present today. Within the group heart, there are many chambers, including a gateway through to the mountain of the bell, the earthly counterpart to Mount Meru, the celestial axis of the world. Transfer awareness within the group heart to the mountain of the bell and here Listen through the group heart to the subtle sounds resonating and vibrating through Mount Kailash, the mountain of the bell. Identified within the group heart, within the mountain of the bell, there's a chamber that opens to the centre of the cosmic foundation. Transfer awareness to the cosmic bell, where the beauty of cosmic evolution unfolds and infinity is regarded as the basic aspect of life. Here, listen through the group heart to the rhythm and the ringing of the fiery bell at the centre of the cosmic foundation. Listen to the silence of the cosmos. And now, within the group heart, as we transfer our awareness back to the mountain of the bell, we do so on the vibrational rhythm and pulse of the silence of the cosmic bell. Identified within the group heart, within the center substanding the mountain of the bell, we pause in silence as we are aware of the movement and vibration of Mount Kailash as it rings its bell as the celestial axis of the planetary world. Here, listen to the reverberations as the mountain of the bell rings throughout the planetary sphere.
within the group heart. Now become aware of the individual heart centre and its connection to the centre in the head called the bell. Like a resonator, this bell within each individual gathers the symphony of the world and can transform the deepest silence into a thundering chord. Listen in silence to how the bell rings through us. We distribute the energies contacted as we radiate the connection through the group heart, from the cosmic bell, through the mountain of the bell, through the bell within us. Cosmic truth and beauty ring through the bell that is in us. And that is us. We will in silence sound a silent om. Over to you, Dot. Thank you, Wendy. <clears throat> Our focus in this Gemini festival <coughs> is right relationships from capacity to service. As we hold our group focus in the field of synthesis that we built together yesterday, we remain focused through Gemini, the distributor of love and wisdom. As we approach the full moon in this period of invocation and radiant distribution of all we have gathered throughout Aries, Taurus, and now Gemini. Utilizing the opportunity of the Gemini Festival of Humanity and Goodwill, we distribute the impulse of the higher spiritual interlude of the year. Focusing on the establishment of right relationships as a foundation for our service. Yesterday, we heard from three panelists. Rene Fougere, director of the Training Center for Energy Balancing in Montreal, Canada, spoke of right relationships within and between individuals. Felix Krola in Germany, co-founder and co-leader of Go and Change, Entwicklungsgemeinschaft für Lebensqualität, a development community striving to enhance the quality of life. Felix and his colleague Ringo spoke about right relationships within and between groups. And Uta Gabay from Germany and Israel, <coughs> founder and director of the Hechel Center for Universal Spirituality, shared about right relationships within and between nations. Today, we invite Rene, Felix, and Uta to open our group dialogue with their reflections on the sharings yesterday. Then we will invite all of us to participate in a conversation and sharing. Rene, Felix, Uta, if you will unmute as you will share. <clears throat> Okay, I, I may begin. Um, yeah, yesterday I made uh, a short presentation about the fact that the right author relations that we can establish and maintain in the world are based, in fact, upon the same work that we could uh, do within ourselves. 
and maintained between the different parts of our cells. And that was uh, expanded, uh, these author relations, to include the right relations between groups by Felix and also between, uh, between nations, as uh, Yuta uh, spoke of yesterday. Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, the most important point uh, in my view is that uh, we need more and more people uh, who are willing to um, evolve, who are willing to clean up, to um, to to do a mental um, hygiene, uh, hygiene, um, and um, who, who really want to go in deep relationships uh, with themselves and with others. Um, on on the different levels from from personal to nationwide, um, and to establish more and more healthy relationships that we can um, solve all the problems, even even the the um, uh, worldwide ones. Yeah, hello. Um... He said yesterday also that uh, right relations is uh, um, a pivotal um, task now uh, and a process now in the planet as a whole. We are moving from separation consciousness to relation consciousness on all levels, individual, group, collective and the whole world. And I would like to put emphasis on um, what I consider a key to this, to see any living being, whether it is an individual, a group or a collective, as a living being uh, beyond the physical phenomenon. When we feel, when we re, um, perceive, any being, as a being, we are mm, naturally related. We have a sense of sameness, of relatedness, and then our behavior cannot be other than right relations. Um, yeah, okay, I have some more to say, but I think that's enough for now. Mm, thank you. And if Rene, Felix, Uta, you would like to share anything else in this moment in a bit of a conversation among yourselves, please feel free. Yeah, okay. So I would like to, to add that um, this type of event that we are now doing is a, a very good example of uh, of right relations you can say this as a panelist of how how uh, the the relation has been woven yesterday <clears throat> even before we um, uh, came on the call we had to organize among ourselves over time zones, over bandwidth, uh, over platforms even, um, this event to make it smooth and harmonious. So this is uh, quite an example of uh, how right relations, um, how the requirement for, for right relations has very drastically expanded in the last uh, whatever decades um, it requires of us now to hold kind of you know a sim simultaneity of um, many relations that we have at the same time on different levels in our consciousness um, yeah and another thing that i would like to uh, point our attention to is the fact that we need to find we are 
in process of finding different ways of communication that go beyond words. There is uh, the more we communicate, the more we more deeply and more more uh, fully we relate. Um, the more we need to find different ways to relate, not only through words, because we cannot metabolize all these words that we are sharing more and more on the internet and uh, everywhere on the phone, whatever. So we we must move into uh, different modes of communication that, uh, like Wendy, you know, this to resonate to ring a bell and to resonate with the bell or to share a silent moment, a silent minute together. How full is this without the words? Um, so I feel that we are uh, also in the esoteric community, we are now uh, com um, experimenting with new modes of, uh, of relations. Yeah, we could also to use this both. I apologize, hmm? Renee. Uh, go ahead, Renee. Okay, just a few words, and we could say also that uh, that expansion of consciousness, as mentioned by Uta, and that sharing is always based also on the common vision, the common purpose that we have to just contribute to the whole. So it's like if we hold that vision of uh, humanity that is cooperating more and more, and uh, each uh, part of humanity is trying simply to help all of the other parts. And so it is a process of expansion and a process also of moving beyond our own egoism and uh, self-centralization in individuals and also uh, within nations. And when we can expand like that, everyone is winning, you see, instead of competing. And it is part of the new paradigm that is being developed now on Earth as the heart, the heart center is developing, the sensitivity to the whole is developing. So everything is becoming synthetic, everyone is affected by everyone. And so this mm. is a great progress that we see on the planet right now. Mm, yes, thank you. And as we continue this conversation, perhaps Alexander, you can share uh, how we open it up to the fuller group. Yes, that exactly was my um, small technical interjection that I intended. Um, we uh, I would like to hold our open forum space today as open and flowing as possible and but we have certain technical limitations so um, uh, most of us have to stay muted but just to avoid sound reverberation but if you would like to contribute to the circle please use the function of raise your hand and I will unmute you and then after you spoke please mute yourself and then you would keep the control of your microphone and you would be able to mute and mute whenever you want to sh uh, share. Uh, some people uh, are still unmuted on the organizer's side and so you have control of your own microphone so you can experiment with muting and muting but if there would be sound reverberations I would have to exercise the privilege of the administrator and mute everyone but please don't take it personally that is just for the uh, common good of audio silence for everyone. So please uh, use the function of raising your hand and we will unmute you. So. Mm, thank you, thank you, Alexander. And as, as those now in our circle decide to give voice to thoughts, comments, uh, further conversation, I would just like to share that one of the takeaways for me yesterday was a combination from all three who uh, shared with us that we are light warriors willing to make the whole community life our priority and making even personal 
decisions according to what is in the best interest of the higher good. And as, as we demonstrate that more and more, uh, we actually come in touch with our group organism. And as uh, was shared, a path of relationship then opens up that is quite profound. I see Lynn has a hand up, Alexander. Um, for some reason, Lynn's microphone is not showing up, so there's some connectivity pro problem. But yes, I see the hand, and as soon as Lynn's mic will show up, we will unmute him. Okay, and Lynn, in the meantime, if you would like to type in a comment, we'll be happy to read it into the circle. The only other thing I'll say up front here is that we are indeed. Uh, Uta, as you shared, learning as a world group the power of silence. So as we gently, rhythmically go in and out of the silence, uh, we continue our joyful group labor. Even before the start of our um, session today, uh, there was a, a question that uh, Ron uh, asked René uh, for guidance to approach melancholy that in hinders service, as well as physical pain from fiery diseases of the brain and nervous systems. It might be a bit very specific, but it um, brings us back to the question of integrating our uh, individual self, so maybe not just René, uh, but anyone on the panel or in the circle if has anything to say that. Yeah, <clears throat> I did not understand very well the question, but I, I, I see that it is uh, written, yeah. I, uh, approach melancholy that can their service as well as physical pain and fairy disease. These are two separate questions. Maybe I could say a word about the melancholy uh, that hinders service. In fact, it is, uh, I think, very often related that uh, we, uh, when we look at ourselves, we feel so inadequate and we have the impression that uh, we cannot be of any help and uh, we want to be perfect before doing anything. So we can wait a long time if we just wait to be perfect. <laughs> in fact, we become better by risking, by daring, by uh, sharing what we have, even if it is imperfect, and if we can make mistake. And uh, as we, we do it, we always have responses, and uh, we begin to see the positive things side of things. Uh, and a good way to see the world is that everything that is happening is perfect because even the problems, because you refer after that physical pains and diseases and anyway, any problem that we have is simply an externalization of what is within. And all the problems that we see in the world are externalization of, I could say, attitudes or way of seeing life uh, that we have as individuals and as nations and that we project outside and that, that just boomerang creating these problems. So the solution is always in the problem that we create ourselves, because we create the problems as a soul in order to learn from the difficulty. For example, if I have a problem with money and I never have money, within that problem, if I really look at that, what has to be done is to learn simply to deal with money and to learn the skills that are missing. And so the problem indicates to me what I have to work on. And when we work on something, there is always improvement. And then we resolve the situation by developing the missing qualities. So that's it.
I would also like to add that uh, uh, it is helpful to know that we are not the only ones who have melancholy or any type of problem, you know, that we are not feeling guilty for it, because especially now that the world is in such turmoil, everything is hurting and, and uh, Many of us are going in and out of melancholy because we do identify with the world in pain. Um, we feel this pain inside. So at least for me, it's helpful when, when this happens to me um, that I know this is not my own uh, personal problem. As uh, Lucille Sedakon says, there is no such thing as a personal problem. We are taking on a share of of the world process in ourselves. Um, yeah. I think it's very good practice to challenge our aspirations and our vision of how things should be done by the real life challenges. Right relationships is a great idea and it's a great ideal. How do we implement it through this, the pain and suffering? So I want to ask Felix how your group deals with the situations when someone in your circle has a problem that he or she brings to the, the group circle. How do you act practically build the right relationships? in such situations? Mm, yeah, as I um, um, told yesterday, um, we, we use um, almost everything uh, we have as methods um, or, pra uh, or practices or, or whatever. Um, there are a lot of people who are competent with different methods of um, of psychology, psychotherapy, um, coaching, or whatever you need. And the um, most important um, aspect is that we trust each other. And when we trust each other, then we can talk about everything, and then we can solve everything. It's not that we have a specific kind of dealing with it. Um, we just use what is necessary and what's appropriate um, for the complexity of a person and of uh, the relationship. The, the person is in. Um, nice. More practically, it's that we, um, we we talk about everything. So we are very transparent about everything um, within the whole group. So mostly everyone knows mostly everything about everyone, and that's um, as um, um, that um, the, the problems are not our own problems um, that are the, the, that are problems that that are there and we have our part in it and when we share it um, then we can solve it together um, and everyone has a part of the problem and everyone has a part of the solution so when we heal things as community um, we heal it deeper than we, when we just try to heal it by ourselves Wow, beautiful. Yeah, that that really makes us then feel not alone with our problem, and then really we it it, it is solved um, so much quicker and deeper when when a group is able to do this together as a group. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I see that Sheldon would like to speak. Yes, Sheldon. Oh, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> thank you all for this, um, both these presentations. I'm, what I'm struck by is um, how many 
<laughs> well, Dot, you triggered it off recently. Just how many light warriors or sparks of light to use uh, one of Felix's and his partner's images yesterday that we have um, here, but also I think available to us um, nearby if we were to if we were to take advantage of it. And um, but what I'm thinking about particularly is just um, in this example here, where the group can be this open, this transparent with one another, what can come to the fore and be lifted and, and, and made light. It reminds me of, Renee, what you were talking about, what I think was so important yesterday, that especially for people who are somewhat <clears throat> esoteric or highly mental about this business, that we have to apply <clears throat> this, these kind of processes to ourselves. And it's so easy to keep on learning and growing. And I think that one of the things that you were you were emphasizing so strongly was just refining the personality and, and taking charge of our defects and use, seeing seeing the potential quality that might come from the defect. I thought that was just such a such a marvelous way to think about things. And you know, the other thing, other two things that struck me so strongly yesterday and it's coming through today again, in your the go and shame community, the fact that you all have have somehow I either agree to or come up with, um, it could be called rules, but others would call them ideals for, for working together. And I'm just thinking about the spiritual warriors, you know, with warriors of light who are taking charge of ourselves. So some of these kinds of things that, uh, um, that make it possible. I think Lucy's Trust talks about spiritual values. Okay, but when, when we align with those values, it, it somehow, um, reminds us of what else is possible. We begin to live up in that particular direction. So the fact that you all are doing this is, is, is marvelous, great for the world. And I wanted to add, Uta, the, the one you were giving some examples yesterday of, of where either sparking, the, sparking a nation to, to get better, I'm thinking about your, 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 all, your work there in Jerusalem with Ephrath there and others, um, but thinking also of, of the United Nations, <clears throat> we didn't speak about too much yesterday, but what's going on here with the US um, in terms of these strategic sustainable development goals for me is such a powerful uh, lift in the right direction of uh, pulling us upwards and showing us what, what needs and must, must be done uh, in that way. So those, those were just really high points. I wanna add one more obvious thing. I know we all know this and it's, it just hasn't been mentioned Outwardly yet, but in this time of Gemini, which is so much the field of the second ray and the field of the work of this very, how do I say, human Christ that we have, it's head, of, it's head of the hierarchy today. We have the presence of the Christ uh, infusing everything, as far as I'm concerned. So if that has any meaning, or as it, as it comes to mean something, so our connection with some of these more developed people. Um, that's an energy stream which, which I think is, is uh, not only available, but it's beaming in toward us in extraordinary ways, especially through this one of these names, this Festival of the Christ uh, during this period. So thank you for doing all of this. And I uh, just want to add all of this in the field um, of, of the Christ. Thank you, Sheldon. Katya, you unmuted. Please unmute yourself. Yes. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. It's as you were talking. You know, I had some thoughts yesterday. I didn't write them down, so I don't remember. <laughs> when uh, when I remember, though, it was the understanding that <clears throat> that the job can be done by a small amount of people. It's uh, about the, I think, the yeast, that you don't need much, but you do need, or the salt. And um, so people who, or groups who do work with this principle, even if they're not large in numbers, they will, they will bring this energy anchor it because it isn't the energy and it is a proportion within the higher and the lower <coughs> so and I my, my, my impression is that the more we 
come to the point of fully getting the sound right, the easier it will be for us to vibrate in a way that we actually do hear and love one another. And um, another thing that was pretty practical that came to mind as you um, were speaking, but that it's good to distinct dis discriminate between the problem, the level of the problem. Because there are certain issues which are, you know, individualist issues, and uh, you deal with them in a certain way that Rene was describing so well. And there are group issues. And um, for that, we do need to rely on the, you know, connection through the group centers. So the energy of that particular problem can be resolved truly in the group not just discussed, not just um, solved, but resolved. So the, the field of group karma, let's say, stays um, clean or manageable. And there are oh. the <clears throat> problems of humanity. And when we encounter that, in our personal individual life or group life, you know, it is wise to bring, to connect to the level of energy of the centers of humanity. And then working through that center or that group of centers, triangle of centers, then we can uh, do that without harming ourselves, our group life, or individual life. It's, to me, that the, uh, at some point, the analogy was to the level of electricity that there is a, like really power lines, and they are very much needed. But if you try to connect to them, it's, it's, it's pure danger to your health. That's why we have in our kind of power greed, great, you know, Yes, like 110. But it is st still, it's common but still too powerful because for certain individual needs, we need like 12 volts. And the discrimination between those levels and approaching them with a true understanding of the ne necessary precaution and uh, Ethics, I think that that is a very practical and needed thing when uh, when we work on creating those right human relationships. Thank you very much, and um, it's, it's it's really deep and uh, much needed conversation. Thank you. Over and out. Diana? Hi. Um, thank you for um, allowing me to speak. And it's been so beneficial listening to um, the offerings of others. And um, I resonate with them. So if I'm repeating something that someone said, it's because um, I've incorporated what they um, expressed as my own. Um, I found that if I am able to keep in mind the goal of the communication within the group or the goal of um, relating to my uh, fellow human beings um, in such a way that I'm responsible for um, any energy that comes from me. Um, I find that by being aware of that constantly, um, I monitor consciously my responses and I think carefully about the words that I intend to convey. Mm. Um, if I'm writing them, it's easier for me because I can write and rewrite and read it and rewrite it until it has a feeling of me, of um, non-personal energy um, but, or helpfulness, whatever it is that I'm trying to convey. 
but the experience has been for me that if I have any reaction to someone and it's not one of um, lovingness or if it's not a neutral energy that I feel, if it impacts me in a way that um, causes me any distress, I recognize that that is a lesson for me to learn and work with personally within myself. It sometimes takes, you know, a day or two for me to go through it, or it can sometimes take a month, <laughs> which I've noticed that it has done. But once I uh, work with it and always keep in mind the goal of um, making that relationship harmonious and uh, not hold any uh, personality uh, resistance, that eventually it, it I am able to resolve it and it allows me to open myself to that person or group again and the outcome is usually much different than it was initially so it's always a constant uh, work that i recognize that we all have to do you know and because we have that responsibility to create those relationships that will be harmonious now and in the future so it's it's a personal work as well as a group work, and I'm really glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Judy? Oh, look, I wanted to say thanks, Alexander. And I wanted to thank everyone who has spoken so far because in different ways they speak for each and every one of us. It's like listening to the heart of the person speaking, the individual speaking, but also the heart of the group. And I think that one of the things that comes to mind is that listening is at the core of right relationship and listening is about uh, requires silence the inner uh, an inner silence that is so complete that what we're listening to is heard completely and reflects onto that still pool of silence um, and then connection is heard and we hear the heart behind things. Um, and I hear that in what everyone has said uh, in various ways. I, I loved what Uta had to say about at the beginning, the, in a way, listening to the essence of everything that lives, that we are connected with everything. And that brings me to the power of beauty. If we, in any situation, can find something that stirs us as beautiful, such as in nature, beauty has an incredible power. I think we're we're only just beginning, as a as a species, perhaps, um, to to understand something of the power of beauty. When we see something beautiful, as in nature, we are lifted out of the small prison of the little self into something larger. Um, I think finding the beauty in those around us, in what they offer, it may not, and in, and in the world, if we look at the surface of the world's uh, events, sometimes we don't see the beauty. Um, but let's take an example of um, a, a great catastrophe of, of floods and fires, and there are many such things happening in the world as, as it moves through this great shift. We can look at the surface and there is pain and suffering. But if we look a little more deeply, we find that the human heart rises up to address um, the issues as best it can. The important thing is the beauty of the human heart that, that rises up. So if we listen, if we're silent enough to hear, 
the heart and the beauty um, in everything, in everyone around us. This is, I think, is the path uh, to uh, right relationship, which leads to a sense of shared identity and shared sense of that oneness that we hear ourselves, if we like, in, in everyone and everything. Anyway, I think that's enough from me for now. Thank you. Uh, Judy, <clears throat> I think um, what you've just spoken about so beautifully um, is one of the responses to um, Uta's question or open question about different ways of communicating beyond words, um, that capacity to um, appreciate uh, the beauty in all um, and you know there's that statement by Nicholas Rorick about um, that it's you know it's not that beauty will save the world but the realization of beauty will save the world so our capacity um, as part of humanity to really appreciate um, and use that Venusian quality of appreciation to really um, see beauty and be, because it's it's something that is really deeply felt within the heart of um, our beings so thank you for your beautiful contribution can I just add something, Wendy? Um, that, uh, 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 I recently came across a quote from Dostoevsky uh, where he said, the world will be saved by beauty. And I think that resonates with what you, you were saying. Um, I'm still reflecting on this because we can read the surface words, but you're right, it, yes, as uh, Uta reminded us, when you start to go through into the meaning and the significance of it, um, there is much, much to be revealed. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I very much appreciate um these last few comments, I think there's something in, in common. Uh, what Judy said about the listening, our listening becomes deeper, finer. And also what Diane before said, the use of words, you know, communication is a two-way thing, listening and talking, or, you know, being the active and, and the receptive pole, and both both the active uh, and the receiving um, becomes more refined. So we need a kind of a discipline of a deepening of this whole process of relation, uh, relating on both ends, the receiving end and the doing end. Um, and we are, this is just, wonderful that we are doing this together on such a call with uh, I don't know 40 more than 40 people having a meaningful conversation deepening this this um, inquiry together by practicing deeper listening and more precise use of words Thanks. Mm. Yes, thank you, Uta.
And we've had a question about the uh, three, but Rene, Felix, and Uta, if you could share into the chat box your websites, the URLs for people who wish to learn more about your work and the communities. Thank you. I would like to pick up uh, on what uh, Katya said uh, earlier, that there are a certain level of problems that it's very difficult to deal with from the person, the level of the personal alignment or level of personal listening. Listening is definitely the key for right relationships. And I agree with Judy. But certain levels of problems require a much higher level of listening. Just a couple hours prior to this meeting, we had a, our monthly meeting with a, a group in Ukraine. We meet once a month, we share about what's happening there and we meditate. And as you know, the last five years has been very turbulent uh, for my country. And today at the meeting, I brought the topic, I shared about our conversation yesterday here at this platform about right relationships and right relationships on different levels. And so they, we started talking about how to build right relationships between Ukraine and Russia, situation where war in place. That's what was Katya referring to. That's, it's a great ideal to bring the right relationship between the nations, but if those re relations are really burdened by heavy karma, how do we deal with that? And for me, the, the answer that I started progressively coming to throughout these last few years is that we need to live to the higher level to the level of will, and we need to listen for the, the what is higher than those differences that divided us. And that is intention of unity. And we as esoteric students, we know about that the plan of unity of humanity, and we deeply resonate with it. And it's it's a challenge and responsibility for us while we suffer as personalities to align with that higher level of listening for that intent of unity which is much above the challenges that uh, our personalities are suffering th through i want to uh, ask you uta how it was in your work in jerusalem working with karma of Jewish and Palestinian communities, bringing them together? Um, two different things. One is when we worked with both, um, let's say with, with uh, Jewish and, and Palestinians in one group, uh we attempted to really um, yeah see the common ground we are all humans we all have a heart we all suffer uh, even though one one part is the occupier and the other part is the occupied um but as as humans we are we are all coming from the same place and eventually we'll, we'll move back to the same place. Um, we were teaching meditation. So um, I was just, you know, teaching a, a technique that everybody learned. And then in meditation, we could meet on that level that is beyond the, the personal, the, the, this incarnation of a Muslim or a Jew or, you know, a Palestinian. Um, 
so this is is one thing to 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 just have a a focus on the common human um, the common humanness and also on the fact or the theory at least for people who for for the, for those it is not yet a fact of reincarnation of uh, remembering or at least envisioning that it is only now that we are coming that we are incarnated as a russian we might have been a ukrainian before or afterwards uh, become one that goes a long way of uh, towards removing our our present identity identification with uh, with one um, nation and and also our present pain around this so this is one um, approach the other what we are trying to do in hechal what we are doing for many years is um getting to an archetypal understanding of a nation, of a collective. What is Jewishness, we ask ourselves. Not what is the Jewish people and anti-Semitism and all, all these, um, these very complex things in the world, but what is the nature, what is the essence of Jewishness? And it takes years and years to to exactly this final listening that you said um finer and finer listening um to understand the underlying essence and the more we understand it the more we you know we become compassionate we become also skillful more to 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 really distinguish and understand these these national characteristics where they come from and uh, what could be a higher point of synthesis for them you know how to resolve and once we have this picture this this wiser this soul um, soul perspective then at least we can hold this higher or wider more comprehensive picture um, and that um, saves, not saves us, but makes it more easy to stand, to, to withstand the happenings of the time, the pain, the injustice, and everything that is there. That's it. Mm. Thank you, Uta. Alexander, I'm looking at the time and I see there is one more hand raised, perhaps one final comment, and then we'll move into the final section of our sharings. So I unmuted Barbara and also uh, Tara wanted to talk. Is it right? I also unmuted her. So Tara, you would have to unmute yourself if you still would like to share. Barbara, over to you. Thank you. Well, I find this whole conversation really very interesting. Yesterday and just the recent conversation and this last question to uh, Ute and what Katya raised, the level of the problem um, on the general broader, le uh, broader level. Um, my response was how to um, bring different Mm, points or views or people together like the Jews, Jewish and the Palestinian communities, for example. My immediate uh, response was follow your, follow your spiritual tradition. And I think that basically all spiritual traditions have in their core um, don't do to others what you don't want others to do to you. So, for example, this could be, this came to my mind. And another thing, do things together. Create things together for some common good or common purpose. For example, um, 
whether it be music or sports or gardening, something along the side of beauty, as uh, it was mentioned before. And Daniel Barnborn and his efforts with uh, orchestra composed of musicians from Jewish as well as Palestinian communities came to my mind. But uh, what I wanted to say before and some just a thought and idea that came to me when listening to the panels yesterday uh, was really connected to what Felix, Felix said, that the answers are already present or a lot of the knowledge is already present. Um, and the main question is how to bring that knowledge into life, and, um, whether it be on the individual level, we can have all the theory of the structure, spiritual structure of man and so on, but then when, for example, melancholy or some other issues pop up, how to deal with them, so how to bring the theory into the practice, or whether it be on some more microcosmic level when things get really complex. And um, what I find very interesting is something that the master DK has said, that um, we should really, uh, whatever knowledge we have, modify, qualify, and adapt it into practice. I find this very challenging and also most necessary because we all can be brilliant when it comes to theory, but what about real life manifestation? So how to adapt whatever we know in service, which is also the keynote of um, this conference from capacity to service. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Tara, last comment before we go to meditation. All right. In sitting here and listening with great attentiveness to this believable, wonderful group, we true are a growing global group. And I think as I've listened, the transparency is transcendent. And will, it becomes will with love, which equals beauty and radiant joy through it. Wherever we are on this planet, we are dedicated to reaching the highest and applying it in whatever form we find it to our reality around us. So the transparency, the transcendence, to the will with love brings in the beauty and the joy that is present in this group. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And Alexander, I'm wondering if you want to share now about Festival Week and preparation? Yes. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, this gathering is a dual, double, I should I say, event with the Gemini Sagittarius axis of um, energies coming together as an opportunity for us to meditate on the unity of the world group as we prepare to the festival week of the new group of world service in december this year december 21st through december 28th since uh, early this year a circle of groups came together with the initiative to coordinate its uh intention like to synchronize its intention to coordinate its events 
in preparation and during the festival week. And as a sound of that synchronization, we came up with the uh, initiative to hold the four beats of alignment during equinox and solstice meetings uh, this year. So the first meeting in this series was in uh, summer, uh, sorry, in in uh, March. Uh, it was equinox silent gatherings alignment. The second one will be happening during the coming solstice next week. So we invite you to join the solstice festival world group silent circle meditation at the exact time of the solstice. It will be on June 21st at uh, 3.30 GMT, uh, Greenwich Meridian time. It's uh, This meditation is a joint effort of the English speaking circle of groups and Spanish speaking circle of groups. And we hope that for the next coming equinox, we will be joined by the Russian speaking circle of groups to synchronize our united intention of the world group. So we invite you to join this coming uh, solstice to this simultaneous silent circle meditation. Uh, there will be information attached to the uh, in the handout section and there will be a registration link in the chat uh, section of the control panel. And I also want to use this opportunity to invite you and your group to start planning your own events during the festival week. Because the festival week, according to Tibetan master Joku and according to the experience of many groups who meditated during the previous festival weeks, which happen every seven years, it's a very special opportunity for the groups to align with the higher source of will energy working for the benefit of humanity so please use this opportunity to plan your group meditations on whatever field of service you have in front of you and then let's share about each other's events and let's open those events to others and that during the festival week we could know about who is doing what and work together as one united group while being focused in own field of service and whenever we feel resonant with others people's meditations and services we could join them and truly being as one Over to you, Dad. Mm, thank you, Alexander, taking that in <clears throat> as we stand together and as a group. So in the handout section, as Alexander mentioned, there are, you'll find both the Gemini Festival 2019 plan and a flyer regarding the Solstice Silent Minute. So, with, and with what has just come up on the screen, let us say a, a special thank you from all of us, Renee, Felix, and, and of course, Ringo, who was with us yesterday, and Uta. Thank you so much for sharing with us, setting context for the deeper sharing that it allows and draws forth, <clears throat> excuse me, from all of us. So, Wendy, will you share just... Uh, briefly about the silent minute, and then we will meditate. Thank you, Dot. So the festival week of the new group of world servers heralds the beginning of a seven year cycle that culminates in 2025. The Solstice Silent Minute at 9pm on the 21st of December, on the first day of the festival week, offers a unique opportunity for global cooperation through participating in the exact same time minute. 
across the planet and between the worlds in a minute of silence. So as we attune then to the ringing of the mountain bell within the planetary sphere, humanity has the opportunity to recalibrate to its true axis of our being within the one life and to set humanity's compass, its axis for the next cycle with the purpose of Senate Kamara. So we'd like to invite you all to participate in the silent minute in December, the December solstice. Um, and we see that as being a real call to our essential identity, our deepest divinity, and our true destiny as citizens of the cosmos. The DNA of the silent minute that was forged on a battlefield back in 1917 between two comrades was really the DNA that landed the recognition of the need for cooperation, not just within the manifest world, but between the worlds. And it was a recognition of the deathlessness of the soul and the need to dissolve not just the separations between individuals and groups and nations, but to dissolve the massive wall or separation between the various worlds so that cooperation occurs between the manifest, the subtle and the fiery worlds that occurred during the Blitzkrieg in London in 1940, where that was a cooperation within the manifest world, cross nations, to stop the war and to enable the forces of light to prevail and intensified the cooperation between the veils, between the worlds to do that. What we see in December 2019 is an extraordinary opportunity to really dissolve this barrier between the worlds and really intensify the cooperation between the manifest, the subtle and the fiery worlds to enable the greatest, highest good for humanity to prevail. So as Dot said, there's a flyer available on the site. And um, we also want to provide a URL link to the Sydney Goodwill website that has a very short clip about this initiative and some articles about it. And we would really encourage you to share with um, your networks. Um, we're aiming, um, ambitiously aiming, to have 7.7 .7 billion people participate in this initiative in the same way that at the time we followed the Apollo mission that landed on the moon, that we had an extraordinary focus from every citizen on the planet in another extraordinary step to allow the dissolution of a huge barrier between the worlds for extraordinary cooperation on a global scale. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. So let us meditate.
we realize that we are a center of light linked with all centers of light within the human kingdom and that a gigantic group meditation is going on in many different phases upon our planet and that all the meditating units and reflective groups are related to one another through unity of spiritual motive. Group Fusion We affirm the fact of group fusion and integration within the heart center of the new group of world servers, mediating between hierarchy and humanity. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Alignment. We project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. The planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara. And towards the Christ at the heart of hierarchy. Extend the line of light towards Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. Stand as a group within the periphery of the great ashram hierarchy. At this point, we are open to the extraplanetary energies now available. Higher interlude, focused within the light of hierarchy, the planetary heart center. Hold the contemplative mind open to the hierarchical work of preparation for the reappearance of the Christ in line with the plan. Meditation. Reflect on the Gemini keynote. I recognize my other self, and in the waning of that self, I grow and glow.
precipitation. Using the creative imagination, visualize the energies of light, love, and the will to good pouring throughout the planet and becoming anchored on earth in prepared physical plane centers through which the plan can manifest. Using the sixfold progression of divine love as the sequence of energy precipitation. One, the center where the will of God is known. This is Shambhala, where the will to good originates. Two, the hierarchy, which is the planetary heart center. Three, the Christ, the very heart of love within the hierarchy. Four, the initiates, disciples, and aspirants who form the new group of world servers seeking to embody the love and light needed in the world today. Five, the hearts of the men and women of goodwill in all lands. Six, the focal point through which the Lord of love will work on earth. lower interlude. Refocus the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram. Together sound the affirmation. In the center of all love I stand. From that center I, the soul, will outward move. From that center I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Then, according to our understanding and accepted responsibilities, Visualize the immediate work to be done in preparing for the reappearance of the Christ and restoring the plan on earth. Distribution. 
as the great invocation is sounded, visualize the outpouring of light and love and power from the spiritual hierarchy through the five planetary inlets, London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo, irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, Dot. Thanks to everyone for joining us for this two days. And those who will be listening the recording online, let's keep our group unity in focus as we prepare for the exact time full moon alignment tomorrow. And next week, there will be opportunity for our further synchronized alignment during the Solstice Festival. The 2025 initiative organizes a preparatory Solstice webinar with the Planetary System Group uh, with topics, formulas for new culture and civilization. That's on June 20th. And as I announced earlier, 
on June 21st, we invite you for the exact times, solstice, simultaneous world group meditation. And our next new moon webinar will be on July 3rd. And we will focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 13. Peace, justice and institution, strong institutions. Thank you.